Hey, what's happening guys? This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. We'll talk more about them a little bit later. What we're talking about today is going to be MOSFETs. And the reason I'm playing with MOSFETs is because, you know, I like to play with uh, Tesla coils. So I have a bunch of little uh, DC Tesla coils. Yeah, you can put up to about 30 volts in them. They're kind of fun to play with, but I want more. I mean, who doesn't want more, right? So I found a YouTube channel called Lab Coats. That's L-A-B-C-O-A-T-Z or Z. And uh, he has made and uh, shares his uh, plans and schematic skedaddles for an AC powered um, solid state Tesla coil. So we need a few things. The first thing we're going to need is a big ass coil. So I ordered this one off of eBay for like $16. I think I paid for it. It's on a about quarter inch PVC pipe, uh, 32 gauge magnet wire. You know, it's a foot tall. It's two inches wide. There's a lot of windings on there. So according, we also uh, 3D printed a little top load. It'll go on there very nicely. So according to lab coat schematic, he is using a uh, power MOSFET. And this is the one that he's using, which you probably can't see what that says on there. It says IRFP460B. That's a big one. So uh, some of the interesting facts about this, the uh, IRFP460B, this is made by Vichet. The VDS is 550. Uh, Q Max is 170. This thing is a beast, just an absolute beast. Let's see. Uh, uh, drain source breakdown voltage 500 volts. Uh, gate source threshold voltage 2 volts minimum, 4 volts max. Gate source leakage around 100 nanoamps. I mean, it's just fantastic. This is a big, big old, big old fit. And uh, I got a box of them from Mouser. And they come very well, very nicely packed here. Always a good idea to get more than you need because you're probably going to blow them up. So let's have a look at it here. We'll put it on the uh, component tester. really matter how we hook these up that's the nice thing about the component tester it just it'll figure it out it's like having a it's like having a little research assistant so we hook those pins up power this thing on until we want a MOS test there you go this is a uh, NE channel power MOSFET pins are gate uh, drain and source the uh Diode drop on that's 599 millivolts till the 3.7 volts and the RDS on like 0.1 ohms. So super, super low switch on voltage for that. That is cool as can be. So what about frequency wise? I checked the frequency on this coil. It is resonant at about 780 kilohertz so is this guy going to be willing to play with us at that frequency let's see if we can put together a little test circuit <clears throat> that'll help us figure that out so we've got a gate drain source so let's put an LED and a 10K resistor. 10K? 1K. I want a 1K. Hang on one second. Yeah, there's my 1K. This is my 1K. Current limiting resistor here. Yeah. 
doesn't want it fit in there. That's the problem with cheap breadboards. They can be finicky. But good, I think we got her in there. All right, then we need to uh, source the ground there. And then we need a wire to control our base. And it needs some power. So this is 12 volts from the power supply. We will start with the base at zero potential. Circuit's energized, we have nothing, which is what we expect. Now it is running because we have taken the base above ground. If I pull it out, it stays lit. If I touch it, it stays lit. If I ground it, it goes out. These are our MOSFET characteristics we want to see. Sometimes you can light it with a finger, but not in this case, obviously. Okay, so I'm going to de-energize that circuit. And now, because I showed you about the insulated gate, I'm going to use a 10K gate resistor to pull that gate down. So now we'll plug our gate control wire back in. We'll again start at the base. Energize the circuit. Circuit is energized when the base is taken above ground. But as soon as I pull this out, it should go out. Yep. That's what we want. So now we are going to introduce a signal from my signal generator. It's up here. So you're going to get a uh, 780 kilohertz square wave at 10 volts peak to peak. So we need somewhere to ground out our signal and we need somewhere to give it our signal everything is connected Oops. circuit is energized LED is not on let's turn on the output of the signal generator good very good, so it's switching with no problem. Let's uh, let's stick an oscilloscope on here. And we'll just have a look at the waveform. Probably not going to be too pretty. Now, this thing is not going to read the 780 kilohertz signal too well, but it's not terrible. Good. So, we now know that this MOSFET is able to handle that switching frequency. It is absolutely cold at an input of 12 volts, but we're going to put in quite a bit more than 12 volts. We're going to be putting in uh, 120 volts RMS, so 120 times 1.44, like 173 volts, somewhere in that area. That's what we're going to be driving the big coil with, so stick around for that. 
we should have something up and going here in a week or so. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to check out our sponsor, Solder Stick. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And have you ever come across something like this where the wires have been stripped, focus, and just crushed underneath the screw to hold them in place? Well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down, giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice professional looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there. www.solderstick.com Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.